The more research I do into this Hunter Biden situation with his laptops, his business dealings in Ukraine and with China, the weirder the shit gets and how corrupt the Biden family is becomes a lot more clear. And I've got to tip my hat to my boy Wesley down there tipping me off to the Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs report that uh, Ron Johnson and Chuck Grassley put together. Now, this didn't get a lot of attention, and prior to it being brought to my knowledge, I haven't heard of anybody discussing it, and this is very, very interesting information, considering, if you can see that right in about in the middle of your screen, you see it was published Wednesday, September 23rd, and what it outlines is very, very interesting, so we're going to go ahead and dive right in. U.S. Senators Ron Johnson, Chairman of the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee, and Chuck Grassley, chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, released a report that revealed millions of dollars in questionable financial transactions between Hunter Biden and his associates and foreign individuals, including the wife of the former mayor of Moscow and individuals with the ties to the Chinese Communist Party. Now, as you can see here, we have the receipts. Hunter Biden received, yeah, $3.5 million payment from ex-Moscow mayor's wife. So I guess that's where... The initial reports came from, but I didn't really hear anything about this report. These were just some of the findings in the investigation into the potential conflicts of interest arising from the Hunter Biden accepting a position on the board of and taking millions of dollars from Burisma, a Ukrainian energy company with a long-standing reputation for corruption, while his father Joe Biden was vice president and public face of the Obama administration's handling of the Ukraine policy. What we found out recently is that Joe Joe Biden made a very conspicuous phone call just uh, during the lame duck period after President Trump was president-elect Trump, detailing that um, it would be in everybody's best interest if certain assets were liquidated and cash flow from the United States need not be required any further from the United States as uh, Trump may or may not be inclined to be looking into that sort of spending. That's what OAN found and that recorded interviews out there currently, and that would really link up to Hunter Biden getting the position on the Burisma board and why Joe Biden would be having such a keen interest in Ukrainian dealings. But here's what the findings from the chairman's investigation included. In early 2015, former Deputy Chief of Mission at the U.S. Embassy in Kiev, Ukraine, George Kent, raised concerns to officials in Vice President Joe Biden's office about the perception of a conflict of interest with respect to Hunter Biden's role in the Burisma board. Kent's concerns went unaddressed, and in September 2016, he emphasized in an email to his colleagues, furthermore, the presence of Hunter Biden on the Burisma board was very awkward for all U.S. officials pushing an anti-corruption agenda in Ukraine. So here's Bill Nye. Oh, no, sorry. This is uh, George Kent. Yeah. Little goofy motherfucker. A career diplomat who said he was told to keep his head down after being attacked by the president's personal lawyer will come, will become one of the first people to testify in public as part of the House impeachment inquiry. This was one of the Democrats' key witnesses, apparently, during the uh, my, Russia, or my Ukraine gate situation that uh, led to the failed impeachment attempt. Because in another act of absolute stupidity and projection, the Democrats, chief among them, Nancy Pelosi, knew of this underlying kind of underhanded dealings with Ukraine at the time. And um, you guys remember that she wouldn't release any of the information regarding the impeachment to anybody, really, when she was asked for evidence based on what they were trying to impeach President Trump for. She said uh, that she wouldn't be able to provide any and that they were just going to impeach based on, oh, I don't know, fuck all. But you have George Kent here. He was going to be one of the main linchpins that were absolutely 100% going to impeach 45 at the same time alleging that Hunter Biden was very awkward for all U.S. officials pushing an anti-corruption agenda in Ukraine. Sounds convenient, eh? In October 2015, senior State Department official Amos Hochstein raised concerns with Vice President Biden as well as with Hunter Biden that Hunter Biden's position on the Burisma board enabled Russia disinformation efforts and risked undermining U.S. policy in Ukraine. Meanwhile, everybody and their mother, I don't need to flash up this anymore, but John Ratcliffe has explicitly said, post this, this investigation, 
that um, Hunter Biden's laptop, which provides proof of everything that's been uh, documented in this report, is not in fact Russian disinformation. And even the uh, questionable FBI has corroborated that. Hunter Biden was serving on Burisma's board, supposedly consulting on corporate governance and transparency in <laughs> the funniest thing I've ever read, when Burisma owner Mikolai Zhlochevsky, sure, allegedly paid a $7 million bribe to officials serving under Ukraine's Prosecutor General Vitaly Yarame to shut the case against Zhlochevsky. God, my people have annoying last names. George Kent testified that the bribe occurred in December 2014, seven months after Hunter Biden joined Burisma's board. Remember, this was the key witness for the Democrats during the impeachment trial. And after learning about it, he and the resident legal advisor responded reported this allegation to the FBI, which we never heard fuck all of over the course of five years, because you guys remember, this was September 23rd, 2020, after all. Never forget, the FBI had Hunter Biden's laptop for two years and did fuck all with it. In addition to over $4 million paid by Burisma to Hunter Biden and his business partner, Devin Archer, for a membership on the board, Hunter, his family, and Archer received millions of dollars from foreign nationals with questionable backgrounds. Oh, and this isn't the first time that Devin Archer and Hunter Biden have done business together. Actually, court reinstates fraud conviction for Hunter Biden business partner. Yeah, they've uh, also worked together when they were fleecing the Oglala Sioux Indian Nation tribe, also my people, well, not Sioux Indians, but, you know, Cree, out of proceeds of bond scales. Even though Hunter Biden was not implicated in this, they were still working together, and if we have um, this information and all of the Burisma stuff and the shady Chinese shit, which, oh boy, we will be getting into as well, uh, it's fair to say that um, Hunter Biden was more or less probably having something to do with this. The dude can barely keep his nose clean in videos, so why would I think that he's uh, free of this certain situation, which Devin Archer is currently doing time for? Devin Archer received $142,000 from Kignes Rashikev, Rakishev? Yeah, Rakishev, of Kazakhstan, purportedly for a car. The same day, Vice President Joe Biden appeared with Ukraine Prime Minister Armeni Yasenkyuk and addressed Ukrainian legislators in Kiev regarding Russia's actions in Crimea. Which, if you guys take the time to go through that Herculean effort to put together I did for the final debate, uh, I detailed the fact that uh, Crimea annexed by Russia was one of the great downfalls of the Obama-Biden administration. Had they done anything about it, they could have prevented that. Hunter Biden received a $3.5 million wire transfer from the former mayor of Moscow's wife. Hunter Biden had business associations with Yi Jinming, Gong Wen Dong, and other Chinese nationals linked to the communist government and People's Liberation Army. Those associations resulted in millions of dollars in questionable transactions, which, if you remember, during the initial drop of emails, Gong Wen Dong from Hunter, from Robert Biden, Mervyn Yan was also on there. My understanding is the original agreement with the director of the consulting fees based on introduction rate of $10 million per year for the three, a guaranteed total of $30 million. The chairman changed the deal after we met in Miami to a much more lasting and lucrative agreement. So it's scary how much information predated the initial laptop release based on this senatorial finding. And then we got Yi right up here. And then of course, yeah, take a look at that. Y'all remember all of that stuff. So I don't know why you can't, if you're in a mainstream media outlet, you can't corroborate the evidence because the Senate already knew this. And then we got the hard evidence. And you said that you need two sources in order to confirm anything to maintain your journalistic integrity. Hunter Biden opened a bank account with Gong Wen Dong that financed a $100,000 global spending spree with James Biden and Sarah Biden. Hunter Biden also moved millions of dollars from his law firm to James Biden and Sarah Biden's firm. Upon being questioned about the transaction, Sarah Biden refused to provide documentation and information to more clearly explain the activity. Huh. And the bank account subsequently was closed. <sighs> well then, that sounds a little bit fishy. But you know who else is a little bit fishy in that? James Biden. 
Hunter's uncle. I've alluded to it in a few different videos and everybody, it's kind of in the public knowledge at this point that James, also known as, uh, known as Jim Biden, is a builder by trade. Not that he has any experience in it, but he gets paid to be a builder. Joe Biden's brother secured Iraq housing construction contract with no experience. Monday on Fox News Channel's Hannity Show, Peter Schweitzer, the author of Profiles of Corruption, Abuse of Power by America's Progressive Elite, suggested that aside from his son Hunter, four other members of the former Vice President Biden's family cashed in on his office. Schweitzer said it was no coincidence that all the deals, whether it's Hunter, whether it's James, whether it's Frank, all of them occur when, during his eight-year period, when Joe Biden was President of the United States. Vice President of the United States. Oh my God, I just spoke, gave myself a heart attack there for a second saying President. Oh my God. Let's take the Iraq contracts for housing construction, he explained. We don't know how much money was made by James Biden in this case because he doesn't have to disclose. But here's what we know. This Hillstone International Company was set up. There was a meeting in the White House on November 4th, 2010. The only time the CEO of this company ever visited the White House went to Joe Biden's office. Literally three weeks later, James Biden was appointed vice president of that company. Who da thunk it? What a, what a great find and pro uh, just a great individual, totally deserving of that position. And then about three to six months later, they get this contract to build 100,000 homes in Iraq. Now, if you look at the bio that they listed for James Biden, it didn't mention anything about construction experience. Well, why would somebody, unless they have specific tools and influence, why would they get a cushy job? It's not like anybody else in the family benefits from that kind of an arrangement. Hmm. Says that he knew his way around the corridors of power. He had political contacts. Oh, that would be why. That's why. His brother was vice president of the United States. Exactly. It was very clear why he was hired. He was hired, I think in part to secure these contracts and also to run interference when there was political pressure. And that's what we are experiencing right now. On behalf of the Biden family, I'm not experiencing any pressure. I'm taking great delight in this. I think it's hilarious. Hunter Biden paid non-resident women who were nationals of Russia or other Eastern European countries and who appear to be linked to an Eastern European prostitution or human trafficking ring. Ugh, yuck. And if any of you brave souls out there watched any of those leaked sex tapes of Hunter Biden over the weekend, you will notice a specific kind of Asianic flair to one of them who is um, very skilled with her feet. I don't understand the thrill of that. I'm looking down at my feet and uh, I... I don't see that being pleasurable what it whatsoever but then again i don't smoke crack on the reg so it seems like he likes to get his dick wet wherever he does business and uh what's the old saying you don't shit where you eat but um then again you're not also supposed to facetime naked with one of your underage cousins this story is infinitely weirder in the fact that one half of the government had clear information had a lot of evidence to this shit being happening and then you got over on the other side you got the fbi deep state and they're saying that they're going to be dropping the investigation uh i don't fucking know what's going on here but there's a lot more that's still going to be coming out and i think now with the clip that it's coming out we're going to be dealing with this long after the election and just add another name up to that ever-growing list of people that are going to be making the perp walk if Trump is successful November 3rd. But I don't have any evidence for that. I'm just uh, reading what I see here. But I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you guys to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.